Hello, it's Tom again. Today, uh, we're going to do a little bit of work boot maintenance and discuss uh, jobs and job applications. So, right now there is a little bit of a construction boom with a little bit of effort and will. Uh, it can become more of a nationwide boom in terms of manufacturing, construction, infrastructure, the whole nine yards. But we're at a pretty good starting point. So if you're like 18, not sure you want to go to college, you want a skilled trade, you don't want to be in debt for the next 20 years to get those skills and you want those high paying jobs, well, now's a good time to actually start interviewing for an apprenticeship as an electrician, plumber, pipe fitter, uh, you know, carpenters, painters, steam fitters, all of them. Uh, especially currently in states that are moving into the green energy initiative. Tried to get states that relied on oil, natural gas, and coal for their industries to buy into it first. They're a bit hesitant. And so now in places like Massachusetts and New York, New Jersey, I'd imagine California, you know, people are taking advantage of these opportunities. So how do you interview? Well, step one, you show up dressed one step above the condition you typically be in at work, which means don't wear a suit and tie if you want a construction apprenticeship. You want to wear some brand new Carhartt pants that are clean, not, no holes in them, maybe a polo shirt so you have a collar. Uh, but you should also show up ready to work that day if need be. And so you need your boots on. But that whole looking better than your regular working condition means clean up your boots. So you can see these work boots, the toes scuffed. They're covered in dust and dirt, so I take a wet paper towel. I don't go too crazy, but I wipe as much of that dust and dirt and gunk off as I can. And, uh, you know, get the backs, all the leathery bits. And I do both of these. Uh -huh. Alright. And, you know, it'll, uh, it'll be okay as is. Um, if you're going to do this on a table or on a carpet, have newspaper handy so you're not going to get crud on your table or waxy bits into your carpet that will never come out. You do it outside. Excuse me while I blot some of the water off of these boots with uh, the newspaper I have them set on. Another uh, good way to catch wax. And there we go. So I prefer Kiwi wax. It's what I used when I was enlisted. I generally stay away from parade gloss for like dress shoes or anything that I will wear for a uh, for many years, but work boots, I change them out about once a year anyway, so I don't care if parade gloss is technically bad for the leather. If it's what's available, I'll use it, and if not, I'll use regular Kiwi black shoe polish. I take some on my applicator brush, and I just rub it into the leather in circles going around. And get that area there too and like a little bit of wax will cover a lot of leather reapply if you see it's not to your brush if it's not uh, spreading on it means you've spread too thin and that's fine and that area by the way is there Okay, and you can see now all the leather in those areas on my boots are now nice and restored to blackened instead of dusty gray. 
gonna let that set for a minute or two before I break out the buffing brush. And while it sets, I'll just apply the wax to my left shoe, or boot in this case. And, uh, you know, like I said, spread it, spread it on nice and even. If it starts to get thin, you know, get some more on your brush. Keep applying in a circular pattern on all the areas that you uh, want shined up. Now, this isn't the military. We're not doing an inspection or anything. So we're not going to sit here with like a cut up t-shirt and, you know, spend 30 minutes getting a high gloss shine on our boots. We're just getting a regular shine. Uh, if you do the high gloss thing and people think you're military, well, best have your DD-214 showing your discharge and that it's honorable. Because there's a lot of veterans out there and don't try to use shiny boots to try to pretend to be military. You will get caught. You will get out it. And stolen valor does not go over well. Alright, so. That's got wax applied to both boots. Now here's the lid to my Kiwi uh, tin. You can see it's got some water in it. So I take my buffer brush and I just kind of dip the end of it in the water to get some in the bristles and then I use the wet brush and I just go back and forth over the toes and all the parts where I put wax on. Don't press down hard. You don't have to. Um, you just go back and forth. Apply a little more water here and there. And you just keep shining it. And as the brush goes back and forth, it's buffing out and smoothing the wax. That makes it nice and glossy. Here it's in the sun, it shines better now. Instead of dull, dusty gray, And I've got nice, clean, polished looking boots for my job interview to get my trade apprenticeship started. Well, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, there's some scars in the leather right there. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It just shows you actually use these boots for work when they have those scars. But you actually care about your appearance, so you're still taking good care of them. Also, if you end up working in a ditch or a trench, which happens a lot in construction, and they're covered in mud and guck, you can just pressure wash it, scrape it, the wax will come right off, which will take the mud with it, and then just apply some fresh wax, and it protects the leather of your boots. Um, you know, a good shoe polish keeps the leather moist so it won't dry rot. That's the problem with the parade gloss wax I told you about earlier. It uh, shines easier. The reason you don't use it on shoes that you plan to keep a very long time is because, you know, it's got silicone or some crap in it that actually dries out the leather and causes dry rot. Whereas a proper wax will keep the leather, you know, kind of moisturized and supple. It's kind of like putting lotion on your skin, but instead putting uh, wax on leather. Same concept, really. Well, um, again, if I'm doing a job interview, I don't really recommend you spend the time to do a high shine. If I wasn't explaining everything to me, to you, this would have been done in under five minutes, and I'd already be starting a second coat. Two coats of that, you have shiny, shiny, shiny freaking boots, that look great and you're still in ready to work clothes you're one step up from the clothes you normally want to appear in at work but if they say can you start right now your answer is yes um, and that also touches on one last thing that in trade apprenticeships and interviews uh, want is attitude 
specifically a very good attitude is the most important trait they want. They're, they're not looking for a um, high level of skill or knowledge for a beginning apprentice. They want somebody with a good attitude and ready to work immediately, but still able to present yourself in the best light possible demonstrates that good attitude. So, you know, think about it. The labor forecast for the next 10 years in terms of construction and infrastructure is looking spectacular. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of jobs out there and a lot of opportunities for high-paying, skilled labor. Comes with an education that won't put you in debt because all you have to do is pay for your tools and your books. There is no tuition. Uh, there is no meal fees. You do need to have um, transportation to do construction. But, like I said, you don't need to take out $50,000 in loans. So there you go. Take, take good care of your boots. Have a good attitude. Bye.